so well respected in the business. Um, a new record. How, how long has the record been in coming uh, for you guys? So, well, I mean, it's been a work in progress for a long time. Um, we, we, I think we, we we put down the first kind of few pieces back in 2011, mm-hmm. even. Um, but, you know, it's one of these things with living on opposite sides of the border and, and all of our touring schedules, and we needed to kind of work on this project undercover any free moments that we had to collaborate, send tracks back and forth from Toronto here up here in Canada and over to the guys in Jersey to lay stuff down. So it's been been a labor of love that's been ongoing for about al- almost six years, but mm. record's finally ready to be released. So it's been a long time coming, but, you know, things happen for a reason. They get released in their own season. That's right, and it, and it's just standout music. Um, and David gave us a little sneak preview um, a little while back, and people are loving it. Um, the Chops Horns, we should mention, I mean, both both – all these three musicians have, have played with greats, and you know, Chops have uh, played with P Funk, Alicia Keys, and uh, just go to chopshorns dot com and do the research, and you'll just be uh, blown away um, by all they've accomplished. And uh, Joel has won uh, several Juno awards, right? Yeah, well, I mean, almost won. <laughs> okay, I've been mean, nominated, nominated four times. A lot of people. Yeah, Junos are the Canadian equivalent to the Grammys, of course, for people that don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've been lucky enough to do that, and I've had a gospel group that's been very successful internationally for the last 10 years called New World Sun, right. and uh, blessed enough to have had Chops Horns play with us for the last three years and, and record on some of our records and travel with us internationally. So that's how we became such close friends. Yeah, Joe Parisian with us, Soul Joe, and uh, Daryl Dixon and David Watson, who have uh, worked together for how many years is it going on, Daryl and, and David? Oh man, I, I we, we we used to we used to say twenty plus, uh-huh. but I think I think we're saying thirty plus now. 30, right? Yes, yes, actually since nineteen nineteen seventy eight. Well, I met David in eighty four in, in seventy four. But you know when 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 uh, when I started the horn section in seventy eight, and we started work on the horn section. So it's been like, since nineteen seventy eight. Do the math. I'm kind of slow. All right, right. <laughs> now, yeah. Now, yep, now, we, you, oh, go ahead. Yeah, we were back in college, and um, you know, like Daryl mentioned, I had heard him play when I was a senior in high school at uh, a concert at Jersey City State College at the time. And uh, when I heard him play, I said, man, I got to meet this guy. And once we met, I decided, you know, I wanted to go to Jersey City State, too, so I could kind of uh, collaborate and and get some stuff going. And and Daryl and I put a horn section together for Savoy Records back then, doing Mm -hmm. gospel stuff. And he was also put another horn section together in Philadelphia, uh, doing doing the Philly scene. Okay. Um, doing independent work out there. And uh, Dow had the idea. He said, Dave, well, if we, you know, get rid of some of the guys, the college kid guys that we're using, and you and I uh, go to Philly and combine with the trumpet player uh, Marvin Daniels and trombone Melvin L., <clears throat> and we all combine the work. They'll give you the pop funk work, and you give them the gospel work. And, uh, Went to one rehearsal, Daryl wrote an arrangement, threw it on the stand, and we played it. It sounded like one horn, but we were like, okay, here we go. So that was that was kind of the, the beginning of it. Um, you can hear us on the Savoy record tip. And then, as you know, we became the in-house horn section for Sugar Hill Gang, mm, yeah. and we were, we were recording everybody on their label. Uh, and Joel, Joel, so Joel was a little tight back then. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you yeah, it's funny. I grew up on all those records: Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and right. the Sequence, and you know, and Sugar Hill Gang. And it's like to to build this friendship so many years later is is surreal for me because. And then all the other artists that sampled all those records too. You know, it's crazy. Like how many times I've heard those horn licks, and uh, and to be able to be in the studio with these guys and have them cook up some new stuff on stuff that I'm singing on and producing. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It all comes full circle. Yeah. Just so, uh, 
tremendous uh, collaboration, and, and we're so glad that uh, you guys have put it together. You initially met in Europe, right? No. Or no. Well, no. more or less. We got to know each other in Europe. I oh, mean, right. We, that was it. We met very quickly in Canada, but um, we really got to know each other in Europe. We were touring with um, Leroy Emanuel, is the uh, guitar player and singer from the Fabulous Counts, right? Mm-hmm. So all the, the funk heads know about Jan Jan is like one of the most popular jazz funk recordings of all time as far as instrumental uh, cuts goes. And Leroy's still going. I mean, he's 70-plus years old now. And he was kind of the, the, the nucleus, has a new project called LMT Connection. Well, it's not that new. It's almost 30 years old. But So we were traveling with Leroy and his group, and uh, that's when we really got to know each other. And even from that, and that was back in 2005. Right. And and back right. then we were like, okay, you know what? One day we're going to finally put a project together that puts you guys center stage because there are so few horn sections operating in the 21st century that have the kind of cachet and history that Dave and Darrell have. And, um, yeah, and, and I think it's a new day, and it's time for the next generation to kind of get hip to that. You know, and, and I have to tip my hat to Joel because, you know, working in the U.S., there, there were a lot of people we were working for that kind of took what we did for granted. And, um, you know, we, we were happy to play on people's records. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as not really stepping out as a solo artist, as a solo act, I should say, you know, we were happy being session guys and flying under the radar. You know, we made a living at doing it, and we loved the studio. Um, and Joe was like, well, when are you guys going to put something out, you know? And this project, Joel originally wanted to call it Chop's Horn. And when we started getting into the project a little deeper and we noticed all the tunes that Joel was writing and all the singing he was doing, I mean, Dow came up with the bulk of the horn parts. And, you know, I threw my little two cents in there. But um, as the project developed, it was like, well, you want to give us that. Guess what? We want to give you the Dow. <laughs> right, right. We got to find a way of, of of working this whole thing out, and that's where the name Chops and Soul came from. And obviously, it kind of has a little food content, you know, kind of a vibe about it. <clears throat> so, you know, that's why we we were talking about "Give Me the Grease," and we have a song on there about chicken and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got and you know, that's food, baby. That's what's up. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. And the thing, the thing that uh, that I really like about you know collaborating with Joe is, is that you know doing sessions for for all these different people and all is cool and all that. Uh, but you know you're you're kind of stagnated. You know you have to you put in the same box as they are, which yeah, is good. Some fun. You know, yeah, which is good and all that. But um, it's it, it's it's like you know it's like a, a, a it's like a being a, a musician being in a Broadway play, mm-hmm. and then, but that every once in a while after playing the same thing night after night after night at once and every once in a while they need to go to a jam session so they can you know so they can blow blow up right, you know, blow right. up the steam yeah. uh, and and being just a horn section for hire got to be a little tedious because we we weren't able to able to do that. Joe was was one who, you know, with his suggestions as far as us, you know, getting out and stepping out and doing, you know, doing for ourselves what we do for everybody else, really, really, I mean, for me anyway, you know, really made it uh, a, a, a fantastic, uh, a, a really fast, made me feel really good, you know. Yeah, well, to jump on that bandwagon, Daryl, it's kind of like we recorded for the Rolling Stones and they let us do an instrumental, and they didn't put that song on the album, and a lot of the slick horn stuff we did wound up on the cutting room floor because when you get hanging with the big boys, there's some big egos out there. Right, and right. If the, and if the horns are a little too hot, yo, <laughs> they're like, hmm, we're, we're not showcasing the horn section. This is about us. They're supposed to be in the background. But, you know, we didn't write stuff that fit in the background. And even with Alicia Keys, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we're on a couple of her records. Right. Now, I have to say, the girls got class 
and she would approach us in a very diplomatic way. Mm, those parts, they're, they're a little busy, you know, right. for, for the feel that I'm going for. She was really nice about it, but it was the same deal, brother. Uh-huh. This stuff wound up on the cutting room floor. Well, well you know, speak, <laughs> speaking of the Rolling Stones like that, the stuff that's on the cutting floor, that's going to be for the anthology set when we're all long gone, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yep, without a doubt. You know, yeah. and, you know, I, I mean, I tip my hat to all the stars we worked for. And uh, one of the major musical directors in the New York area, who's now considered an L.A. guy, mm-hmm. but, uh, who's now considered an L.A. guy, um, he he uh, would would take out, well, Dow, you want to talk about Mr. Ray Chu? Yeah, Ray Chu, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was he was really instrumental in us working for a lot of the artists that we that we've you know, that we worked with, and uh, 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 and his, him and his, his second keyboard player at the time, uh, Bobby Douglas, uh, were you know really 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 helped to help to elevate us to you know to to, to get well I'll, not elevate us but I'll say get us in the ears of of a lot of people. You know, and yeah, they were inst- very instrumental with yeah, uh, with yeah, us um, yeah. playing behind the major artists. So when you go to the Chops website and you see Chaka Khan and Al Jarreau and all all of these The Temptations, you know Stevie Wonder, Chick Corea, when you see all these things, you're like, Man, how did these guys get to play with all of them? Uh-huh. And um, it was all because of we were in Ray Chu's band. Right, you know how they, you know you know you know how they say how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Right, right. right. There is another way. Uh huh. <laughs> know the musical director. <laughs> That's right, and be on good terms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now the funny thing Ray would do is he liked us to write horn parts on records that um, that weren't on the record. He wanted us to write stuff on the record, but he also kind of respected our creativity. But what Ray would do is he'd hear some of the real slick chop stuff, and he'd say, well, guys, uh, can you save that for your record? You know, when you guys record a record, you could put that on there, and the whole rhythm section guys would laugh. You know, that was a going joke. You know, all, all that chops, when they'd hear horn parts, they'd look at each other like, Ray's not going to go for that. Uh-huh. And nine times out of ten, they were right. He'd say, no, nah, guys, save that for your record. So when we met Joel... Joe was like, guys, you do what you do. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and, you know, I have, and, you know, and like I said, working with Joe is a pleasure because, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, granted, I really never really have a, a writer's block. I mean, as far as like arranging, mm-hmm. I can all, I can always think of something always, you know, but, but, you know, with, when I do stuff with, with Joel, you know, because he's such a musical, such a musical guy, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's really, it's really a pleasure, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, you know, with, with other, with other accounts, you know, you, you get so afraid of trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, you're trying to do something interesting musically, and, you know, and, the, and a lot of times, like Dave said, you know, cutting room floor and all that, but, you know, Joel gives us carte blanche with what we want to do, and, and it always works out. And I think because we are very much musically connected like that. Yeah, yeah. we, we got to yeah. get into um, some of the new music because uh, we want our listeners to, to hear what you guys have created on the new record, Chops and Sold. Joel Parisian with us, Daryl Dixon and David Watson from Chops Horns, Chops and Sold. This is called Gimme the Grease. You can go to ChopsHorns.com. And uh, Joel, how about your website? Yeah, it's just chops and soul, chops and the letter N soul dot com. Okay. And you can find out what we're all about right there. Yeah. That's that's oh, the that's, best site, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's yeah. also there's also another there's also another site uh called www dot soul standard dot com. S O U L standard. Okay. Soul standard dot com. All right, people can go there and, and get the record right now? Yeah. All right. Yeah, February ninth is our official release. All right. This is uh Chops and Soul. Gimme the grease. All right, there they are. We've got yes, uh, yes. we got Chops Horns and Soul Joe Parisian right now, and uh, outstanding track from the new record. And uh, the title track of the record is 
Give me the grease. Give me the grease. Give me the grease. We heard it right there. And, uh, you know, I first want to say hello to a few people out there. Uh, first, a mutual friend of ours from Boston, Miss Barbara Thomas at Berkeley College of Music. We love Barbara, and, oh, and she yes. loves, loves the Chops Horns and Chops and Soul. Mm-hmm. Yep. And one, one thing, uh, Bar- I was talking to Barbara yesterday, and one thing she said mm-hmm. that the Chops Horns are so respected in the industry on um, how to do things right. I think that's why you guys are called in to do all, all these award shows, possibly, right? Yeah, and I still think it, 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 all, t- it all ties into Ray Chu. Uh, being being the MD, mm-hmm. you know when you, when you like Daryl said, get in the Carnegie Hall. You know when you when you when you have uh, a musical director uh, that respects you um, and and sends and gives you a good portion of work. But those award shows, it's a double edged sword okay. because people see you on TV and they automatically think you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> how, how how long? Do- how long does it take for those checks to roll into your into your mailbox? Uh, thirty <laughs> days, most at the most. Uh huh. Yeah. Usually within thirty days. So there are some little residuals. I mean, we did um, a Levi jeans commercial for um, Alicia, and uh, you can barely hear the horns, but we were in there, and you know, every couple months we get little residual checks, mm-hmm. but. Sometimes it scares people away. They're like, oh, man, I saw those guys on TV. You know, I don't want to call them. But there's a person that lives in Connecticut out there by you. That's right. That, that had a dream that she was at an Alicia Keys concert. Yeah, right, yeah. And she said, man, that horn section is hitting. I'd sure love to use them on my record. And when she woke up, she went to the Internet and found us. And that's, yeah, that's right. She's Mia Finale, who's a great lady and powerful voice and been on our show mm-hmm. several times. And, yeah, she, she, just as you said it, she says, I'm going to find out who they are. She contacted you. And tell us mm-hmm. about um, working on her record. Well, um, she she had a, a, a really good vibe about her material. And, and what was her, her co-producer, Daryl? Uh, Matt? Uh, Matt, yeah, Matt, Matt Nichols. Was, uh, Right, right. Matt Nichols. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yep, yep. The two of them had had stirred up something really nice as far as um, rhythmically and vocally. And um, Matt was the gentleman that got in touch with me. I think he called Daryl, and Daryl always always sends them to me for the to, to kind of argue about the money, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, he's too much of a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, was the one that they was the one that books the session. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yep. course. We, you know, we all have our jobs. You know. That's yeah. right. Yep. Our jobs. So that's, yep. So he called, and you know, we worked out. We worked out a few things, and then you know, I gave him a couple options, and then a couple of days later, he called me back and says, "We want the full Monty. We want all four horns on all of the song, on all of the song." And they, the stuff was just crying out for for a horn, and uh, we really got to sink our teeth into a really nice project. And Matt and um, uh, Mia both came to the studio. And once we got a chance to see her spirit and check out her soul, uh, she was just so pure through and through. And we just hit it off. You know, it was like, you know, you meet somebody right away and you want to bring them home to Mm -hmm. feed them. (laughs) And you know, know, when when we we started working on this, on, on the stuff like okay when when you know she gave me the, the, the rhythm tracks and I started doing the horns and all and and, and you know we got in the studio and I remember I remember her saying when we when we did, uh, I, I forgot what the first what the first song um, uh, let, let me introduce myself was, I, well anyway point point being that when she heard what we did or what, when we started playing to the track you know. She was blown away, and she came out. To the, she came. She came out of the studio. She said, "Seriously, seriously, that's it." Because she didn't. She didn't. She didn't believe that. That's that. That's what you know. That that's what we what we were going to do. And 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 I and I told her. I said, you know, when we do a session for like an indie artist, you know, we don't we don't do you know peanut butter and jelly horn parts because they're an indie indie artist. You get the same horn parts, the same creativity that we would give Alicia Keys. 
Yeah, yeah anybody else? Right. Or anybody yeah. else? That's how that's how we do. You know, well, they're just an indie artist. You know, we can we can skate on it. You know, like that. We, we, we don't do that. We do not. We don't, we don't do that. We do not do that. And well, yeah. and she and she and and she she appreci- she really appreciates that. Well, we're going to get into uh, a track that we just spoke of, the great artists from Connecticut, Mia Finale. And uh, this is uh, called Funky Like Me, featuring uh, Daryl Dixon and Dave Watson. Soul Joe Parisian is with us as well, the great keyboardist and vocalist. And uh, we'll come back and speak uh, one final time with Chops. And- All right, I got to apologize to the guys. We are back. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hey, no worries. It's no only worries. it's it's my first show. I you know I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we got the phone lines all set. My apologies, but hey, listen, we've got Chops Horns and Soul Joel Chops and Soul. Give me the grease, the new record, and uh, Mia Finale was playing in the background there. So you guys, of course, in full full promotion mode for for this great new record and uh, looking to get out because we know you guys play real instruments and perform outstanding. Uh, what, what's planned in, in the near future? Well, a lot of things are on the go. I mean, of course, when you're releasing a record, there's we're kind of focused just right now on, on the promotion. We want people to hear it. But summer is around the corner. It might not feel that way right now, but right. before you know it, it's going to be high festival season. And so we've got a lot of things in the works that we're trying to get cooking because, I mean, we, we think that what we've, have to offer is very compatible with a lot of the major jazz festivals really around the world and uh, one of them in fact that we're really excited about is um in niagara falls there's a huge jazz festival that we're going to be one of the headliners at um so we're going to be just getting our live game just tightened up and ready for that uh for for the summer and um we're really excited about it and and i mean also you know this project has kind of been undercover for so long and it's like we just love the fact that we get to talk about it, talk about all the guests that were involved yeah. playing on the record. I mean, guys like Dennis Chambers, mm, wow. Earth's greatest drummers, you know, uh, Fred Wesley, who was James Brown's right-hand man for so many years mm-hmm. at the JB, the, the funkiest yeah. trombone player in the world, mm-hmm. you know. And then, of course, um, it was really sad when, when Bernie Worrell left us last year, of course, right, with right. a great funk keyboardist that any... Any keyboard player like myself has stolen half of his stuff from Bernie. Um, and one of the only, I should mention, two-time rock and roll of fame, uh, rock and roll hall of fame, I mean, inductees. Yeah. You know, he was inducted with Parliament Funkadelic, and he was also inducted with Talking Heads. A lot of people That's don't right. know that. Yeah. So when we lost Bernie, it was such a shame. And, and to know that our record is actually one of Bernie's last recording, you know, right. gives, gives the record this extra weight. And um, to be very honest, we, we kind of delayed the release. We delayed the release. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We wanted to be respectful of that. We would never wanted anybody to think that we would uh, capitalize on his passing as some kind of media footnote. You know what I mean? So yeah, one of we had a long yeah. time past just to be sensitive about that. But but now that enough time has passed, I mean, we're excited about it because I think people are looking for those kinds of little Bernie fans are looking for those little tidbits and know that that there is these phantom recordings out there, you know, from the vault that are getting released. So, yeah, it's a really exciting time, and to know that all these these well recorded, well known players kind of gave us their stamp of approval by wanting to be a part of it is it's really exciting and something we love to share with everybody. Yeah. And, there's, and there's also Tony Monaco. Oh, yeah, of course. course, I can't forget Tony Monaco. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, the, the trumpet solo you heard on "Give Me the Grief" uh, was Freddie Hendrix who has out uh, a nice jazz record called The Jersey Cat. Okay. And he, he also did uh, the last Alicia Keys tour with me in 2008. And I uh, just wanted to give Freddie Hendrix a, a shout-out. Great trumpet player. He's all over the scene in New York. And if you're a straight-up jazz head, you might want to look for um, a record called The Jersey Cat. All right. Great recommendation. From uh, from uh, great musicians and uh, you know uh, Bernie Warrell, ju- just a sweetheart of a guy. He actually oh, uh, came into our studio with all his keyboard, full keyboard set up, and, and played uh, years back. And mm. you know he he he's a guy. You know I, I think he should have gotten uh, a bigger send off than he did. But uh, you know <laughs> you, you guys yeah. have, have spoken so so great about him and, and worked on one of his last recordings. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it was such an honor to have him yeah. be part of it and to collaborate with us. In fact, he, um, you can hear his, that, that, that P Funk je ne sais quoi. You know, have to forgive uh-huh. me for being Canadian, you know. Right. That sound is all over our cut. Old school. I mean, it's one of the songs that we recorded with Bernie, co wrote with Bernie. And, um, when you, you can hear him all over that track. I mean, when I play it for my friends who are P Funk fans, you know, they just start laughing right away because you realize that that kind of intangible thing that makes a George Clinton recording sound like a George Clinton recording, really so much of that is Bernie. And yeah. so to have those little, you know, the synth comps and the clavinet figures that he plays, it's like when you hear that track, um, you just can't help but think of the P-Funk. And so to kind of keep that line going from, from, from Daryl's tenure uh, all the way to the present day, even having guys like Fred Wesley and Dennis Chambers, who of course are P Funk alumni, it, it, it's so cool to kind of bring it all, you know, kind of full circle in a way, and um, and and it, it becomes an unofficial tribute to Bernie Worrell, really. Yeah, I'm and sure. I got to yeah. tell you, Joe, in our mind, mm-hmm. it's all about the music. Right. You know, forget the gimmicks, forget all of the the, the samples. You know, we're, we're we're just some old school cats right. that trying to keep it real. Right, right. It's still still yeah. passionate about what you've been doing all these years. Yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. And, and time for our <laughs> listeners to uh, go back in the record crates and look at those liner notes for the names of all the records that uh, you guys played on. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you can find Chop's Horns. And Joel brought it to my attention that we did get some credit on one of Sugar Hill. Uh, gang song, right? Sugar Hill Records were right. notorious for leaving you guys off the yeah, credit. Yeah, we <laughs> I know they have those albums. But on Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five on The Message, mm-hmm. you guys are actually credited on the reverse of the sleeve of the vinyl oh. um, when they were positioned. So, like, you know, along with Doug Wimbish, who went on to be the bass oh, yeah. player from there, of course. So, some of the musicians sometimes got credited. In the kind of the Sugar Hill, yeah, you know the the, the high right. times of the golden age of the Sugar Hill Records right. label. But I got that record at home, and there it says "Horn <laughs> Section Chops Horns." Okay, right. so, give you at least one shout out. <laughs> it, it was just an oversight from the Robinsons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can say that, Joseph. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to thank uh, Chops and Soul. Um, and if you just tuned in and, and saying you missed out, um, we're going to have it on our own website at upperroomwithjoekelly.com uh, by week's end. And, and got to thank longtime friends uh, Daryl Dixon, David Watson of Chops Horns, and their great collaborator, Soul Man, Soul Joel Parisian from Toronto. And uh, great scene up there, Toronto and New Jersey getting together, making it funky. It's music that we need, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Means a lot. Yeah, chops and soul, and and thank you, Bern, Bernie Warrell, for our grace in this track. Um, we're going to go with old school and go to uh, the websites chopsandsoul dot com, chopshorns, and uh, joelparisian dot com too, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, find all of them. Yep. And uh, we put it on our Facebook page, the great uh, promo teaser, and that's that's the way a lot of bands can get. Uh, that's the way to do it to promote this this record and project. So, th- thanks, guys. Thank oh, you. Oh, pleasure, Joe. Thanks for having us. We love Connecticut. That's right, and, and we love <laughs> Chops and Soul. And uh, get that record. Give me the grease.